All right, folks. In this lesson, what I want to talk about is a concept called Oaken's Law. Now, what we have just recently learned is, over the last few lessons, we've learned about the aggregate market. And one of the things that we learned is that based on changes in the aggregate market, we will see changes in the price level and in real GDP in the economy. One of the things that we learned is that when there are changes in aggregate demand in the economy, in the aggregate market, that that will lead to changes in the price level and real GDP. We also learned that if there are changes in short run aggregate supply in the economy, that that will lead to changes in the price level and in real GDP. Now, we have discussed previously that the price level is related to one of the three uh, penultimate goals of macroeconomics. Remember that the ultimate goal of macroeconomics is to increase overall utility for all the people in the economy. But to achieve the goal of maximizing utility for all the people in the economy, we focus on three penultimate goals, which are price level stability, economic growth, and full employment. Okay? Now, we can see how aggregate demand and short-run aggregate supply in the aggregate market affect price level stability. Because we know that when there are changes in aggregate demand and short-run aggregate supply, that that results in changes in the consumer price index, which is uh, how we measure the price level, or one of the ways we measure the price level. We also know that real GDP is related to economic growth. That higher real GDP means more economic growth, lower real GDP means less economic growth or no economic growth. So it's obvious how aggregate demand and how short run aggregate supply affect two of the three macroeconomic goals. But what we're missing here is the goal of full employment. And we would like to understand how changes in the aggregate market might affect the unemployment rate which is our measure of full employment in the economy. And so what we bring in is we bring in Oaken's Law. Now, Oaken's Law is more like a rule of thumb, and I'm not going to go into great detail. There are more specifics to Oaken's Law than I am willing to discuss in this principles class. But the basic idea of Oaken's Law says that there is a relationship between the unemployment rate and real GDP in the economy. And so, even though we can only see an effect on price level and on real GDP when there's a change in aggregate demand or short run aggregate supply, there is then subsequently an indirect effect after there's a change in real GDP, there is an indirect effect on the unemployment rate. And that effect on the unemployment rate is due to Oaken's law, or what is casually referred to as Oaken's law. Okay? All right, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to define Oaken's law for you. What is Oaken's law? All right, Oaken's law is basically states there is an inverse or negative relationship. between real GDP and the unemployment rate. And so what's happening here is if we see, you know, when there's a change in aggregate demand or short run aggregate supply, we know that after that change occurs, that then there is a change in the price level and then there's a change in real GDP. And whenever that change in real GDP occurs, there will then be a follow-up effect on the unemployment rate that is inverse or negative related to whatever the change was in real GDP. Very simply speaking, what we're saying here is that when real GDP goes up, the unemployment rate will go down. So higher output in the economy results in lower unemployment in the economy. 
And that makes sense. In order to have more output, in order for us to produce more stuff, there's going to be more people working, right? So our unemployment rate is going to be lower. On the other hand, when real GDP goes down, so we're producing less stuff in the economy, well, because we're producing less stuff, obviously there aren't going to be as many people making stuff, so there are going to be more people out of work. So a lower real GDP is going to result in a higher unemployment rate. And that is basically what we want to understand about Oaken's law. And so what we learned last time was we learned that short-run aggregate supply is primarily affected by production costs. And we said that production costs are affected by uh, factor prices, the prices of factors of production. And we also said that production costs are affected by factor productivity, right? And then we also said that factor prices and factor productivity can be affected by supply shocks. And what I'm trying to draw a picture uh, or a diagram for you here is, is a full picture of the dynamics of how changes in the economy affect our macroeconomic goals. So supply shocks affect factor prices and factor productivity, which subsequently affect production costs in the economy, which directly affects uh, short-run aggregate supply, which then affects the price level in real GDP. And then when real GDP changes, according to Oaken's law, we'll then have a change in the unemployment rate. So you can see how all of these determinants of short-run aggregate supply affect our three macroeconomic goals. And so we want to understand all these things that affect short-run aggregate supply because they affect our ability to achieve our three macroeconomic goals. Similarly, over on the aggregate demand side, what we learned in the previous lesson is that aggregate demand is directly in tune with total expenditure. That when there's a change in total expenditure, there will be a likewise change in aggregate demand. We learned that total expenditure is made up of consumption, investment, government spending, and net exports in the economy. And we learned that consumption is directly affected by income in the economy, interest rates in the economy, and taxes. We learned that investment is affected by the expected return on investment from making a purchase for a business and also affected by interest rates. We learned that government spending is simply affected by changes in government policy. And then we learned that, the, uh, that net exports is affected by foreign uh, economic performance or foreign real GDP, meaning are other countries in an expansion or in a contraction, and that net exports is also affected by exchange rates. And so here's what I'm telling you. This, when any one of these things changes, they will subsequently change one of these things, which will then affect total expenditure, which will then affect aggregate demand, and then affect a change in the price level in real GDP. And then when real GDP changes, that will affect a change in the unemployment rate according to Oaken's law. And over here, so now you can see is, uh, since we want to try and understand and manage our three economic goals, that we care about 
all these things over here. We care about government policy and how other countries are doing, about the expected uh, return on investment, which is basically the confidence of business leaders. Are business leaders confident in the immediate future of the economy so that they're going to buy stuff and increase aggregate demand? We care about income in the economy. We care about interest rates. We care about taxes. We care about all this stuff. Why? Because all of it affects the aggregate market, the stability of our price level, our economic growth, and full employment in the economy. And so this is the ultimate picture of everything that we want to be concerned about in this Principles of Macroeconomics class. And Oaken's Law gives us basically our final piece of how all these things affect our third macroeconomic goal.